Support for this podcast comes from Synchrony. Ever wonder how to calculate your true cost of financing and how to fit the price of financing into your business and pricing for products and services? In Secrety's new and improved Toolbox website, you can easily calculate your cost of credit, view educational videos, and learn more about Synchrony's digital tools. Simply go to toolbox.syf.com to explore and learn more. Welcome to Successful Contractor, powered by Certain Path, a show for residential contractors about residential contractors. We chronicle business journeys, share insights, and celebrate successes in this wonderful industry. I'm your host, Bob Houchin. As a reminder, all episodes of The Successful Contractor are available on YouTube as well as your podcast player of choice. And for more information on how Certain Path you can put your contracting company on a certain path to success, visit our website, www.mycertainpath.com. I'm excited to bring to you an interview with Christian Youngblood of Mackinac Sons in Wadsworth, Ohio, which is just outside of Africa. Today, Christian's earned that hybrid manager plumbing salesperson role. But in 2022, he was a full-time plumber in the field, selling and installing his own work. And Christian had an incredible year, selling over $1.48 million in a small Midwestern market like the Akron area. That is impressive. Christian was one of 25 plumbers recognized at our Certain Path Awards Gala for selling over a million dollars in residential plumbing work. We had another 84 sell over half a million dollars. Now to be recognized, you have to report your numbers. And we know with over 1,100 members now, there are plumbing contractors in our certain path group who prefer not to share their numbers, and that's fine. But there's no telling how many more plumbers in our certain path family use our training and systems have sold a half million dollars or a million dollars or more. So certain path plumbing members, if you're not going to service essentials, plumbers advanced training, let's make it that priority this year. Non-certain path members who are plumbing contractors, would your company benefit by having five or six plumbing trucks each doing a half a million or even a million dollars in sales? Come to a profit day, discover how you can make that happen. Okay, without further ado, here's my conversation with Christian Youngblood of Mackin and Sons in Wadsworth, Ohio, who sold and installed $1.48 million in residential plumbing work. I hope you enjoy our conversation and take away another or two. Christian, thank you so much for sitting with me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, for those who haven't had a chance to meet you yet, either at Expo or a training, kind of share with everyone your name, your company name, and uh, where you guys are located. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Bob. Uh, my name is Christian Youngblood uh, from Mackin and Sons Plumbing. We're in Wadsworth, Ohio. Um, very good. And you guys, you had, we're, we're talking today for a very good reason. You had a phenomenal year last year uh maybe kind of share with everyone roughly we, we've talked about what, what what you did in sales last year in plumbing yeah so last year in plumbing i did like four hundred eighty seven thousand dollars in water heaters and just a little over a million dollars in uh residential service so that's and you you installed it yourself that's the big part. yeah ex exactly yeah. so it was it was a it was a long year but it, <laughs> it, was, it was rewarding at the same time so oh, hey. That's that's incredible. I, I, before we had record on this, we were talking. It, it's, it's not often you see Middle America do that kind of sales and do the installing as well. So, you, great job, great job. We're excited to, to have you on and hear how you did it. So, yeah, thank, thanks. Yeah, let's dig into how did you end up in the plumbing trade exactly? So, my next door neighbor growing up was actually a plumber. He did uh, Wayne Homes, which was just you know fast con new construction houses, throw them up, you know, paying these guys minimal dollars to rough in these houses. So everything was quick. Um, one summer, my dad said, "Hey, you know, take Christian with you." Got paid five dollars a day to go with my neighbor Rich. <laughs> so we we'd go out to these jobs. I'd get fittings, um, you know, drill holes, all all the fun, goofy stuff. Taught me how to solder. Um, would set some toilets here and there, maybe a faucet. And then one day though, I was taking some screws out of a tub because one piece tubs come with little pieces of wood in there. Okay. I actually got fired from my first plumbing job because I couldn't get the screws out. Oh. I was only 12. So I was just, I just decided to hang out in the tub for a little bit. And uh, he came out, he's like, what are you doing? Yeah. And on the ride home that day, he's like, we're not going to need you anymore. Oh, boy. So the rest of that summer, I didn't work with him. But then I went back and, you know, helped him out. My uncle was actually a plumber. Okay. Um, helped him a couple times here and there. And then I ended up going to college for a little bit. Okay. And wanted to be an accountant. That's that's what I wanted to do. Um, ended up having a concussion, getting a seizure. 
Oh, boy. And got a hold of my account, you know, crazy, you know, sob story for college. But I was sitting there, I'm like, what do I want to do? I'm like, I already know the basics of plumbing. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to call myself a plumber or anything, but I have a lot of background in it. You know, I set my first toilet when I was 12 years old, changed my kitchen sink in my house, um, did all did all kinds of, you know, goofy odds and ends stuff. So I made the decision to go to a local company that was in my town and work for him. And I worked there for about eight years. And what kind of work was it? Uh, it was it was everything. Yeah. So it was, you know, I'd go, we'd go in the morning, we'd go rough in a house, hit a couple service calls on the way home. Maybe if we didn't have a house to do, we'd go do a couple more service calls that day. Uh, we would do a lot of radiant floor heat. We do this quick service. It was quick. Go in there. Hey, my water heater's leaking. Okay, I've got blinders on. I'm just going to change this water heater out. I'm not even going to worry about the shutoff valve because I don't have one on the truck. Yeah. Um, so it was a very good technical training experience for me. Sure. Um, he taught me a lot of all of my basic skills that I needed to learn. But once it got to a point to where I'm like, okay, there's got to be more here. Um, I was kind of getting stuck. He felt stuck. So I asked for more, asked for more. Hey, can I do this? Can we do this? And just kept getting, you know, pushed aside. Yeah, that's a good idea, but let's, you know, I'm, I'm not really interested in that. And that that's fine because that was his company. That's what he wanted to do, and that that's what happened. So I ended up going into an infrastructural um, type of plumbing, so gas lines. Mm -hmm. under, so I have, you know, fusing certifications, all that stuff. So I was doing SDR piping underground for Dominion Energy um, for a year, all right. and I just was not – didn't feel rewarding to me. It was in the in the union, you know, you're just kind of a number, just go to work and do what you're told. Sure. So we actually got laid off right before COVID. Oh, goodness. The week we bought our first house, oh, we got laid off that same week. And I was just sitting at home board one day, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to call some plumbing companies and see see what they have to offer. Yeah. And I called all kinds of different people, got a bunch of different op offers because I had a, you know, a decent amount of experience. And sure. Good guys are hard to come by, you know, you find once you you go into the management side of it. Yeah. Trying trying to find the right people. Yeah. Um but Mike answered the phone one day and he's like, Hey man, we're on a hiring freeze. I'm like, Wow, this guy's got got a big company here. He's on a hiring freeze, that's crazy. Yeah. I was like, All right, well, didn't think anything of it. Went back to work. The layoff was over. Okay. People we were deemed, you know necessary or whatever they called that during COVID. Right. Um, and essential. Yeah, we were essential. So went back to work and then second day back off the layoff, Mike called me. He's like, Hey, you want to come sit down for an interview? And I was like, you know what? That, that sounds good. You know, I'm not very happy where I'm at. Sure. Went to work every day, had a family to fight for. So I did what I needed to do. Yeah. So I met him one day after work. We met in this little, he had a two car garage and a little office space inside of an office building. So the two-car garage was out out here. I'm sitting in this parking lot thinking, man, this is, you know, this is kind of crazy. I'm like, I don't see a shop anywhere. Yeah. And he's running late because he's actually in a truck, couldn't get a water heater to drain. So he's like, hey, I'm, I'm running behind. I'll be there in 30 minutes. Yeah. So I was already waiting there for an hour because I got there early because that's just my personality. Yeah. So finally go in the office. We're sitting there. We ended up talking for two hours, me and Mike. I was telling him kind of what I was looking for. You know, I really wanted to provide the best thing for the customer and a lot of not giving them options when I see something wrong, it doesn't seem right. Yeah. Um, Cause then they just had to pay for us to come back out and fix it when it actually does leak or, you know, causes damage to their property. Um, and at that day, at the time, obviously we were called success group international. Yeah. And he's like, have you ever heard of SGI? And I was like, never heard of it. But what, what's that? Right. And he's like, well, all of your views line up perfectly with what they teach. Yeah. And from that moment on, me and Mike kind of sat sat down, got our views aligned, went after it, you know, grew from, you know, three guys to now we have CSR, we have, you know, five trucks on the road, we have, you know, five guys. We have four trucks on the road, five guys. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's been a been a great journey. We upgraded our shop, so now we have you know a big building, and and we're just doing a lot better, hitting our goals, working some things out, and yeah, doing the best. It's starting to be a real business. 
that just a couple. It, it is. It, it's yeah. it's grown so much, and it's it's a fun, you know, stressful time more for him than me because I I get to just be the guy that's like, yeah, I'm, I was here for the for it. You know, you did you did all the hard work. Now I just get to, I got to be here for the ride. Right, and now that's the feel. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, what your role is now? Yeah. So now what I'm doing is I'm 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 coaching the guys up. I'm doing trainings every Thursday, um, ride alongs with the guys, just kind of seeing what they're doing, what we could do differently, um, reviewing tickets. Yeah. I do have a couple install guys that I oversee now because it's a system that we're feeling works for us. So I'll essentially go out and sell a job, and then I'll have a low lower you know level apprentice slash getting kind of ready you know some people will just throw this person in a truck and then wonder why they're not performing well um so we're kind of setting them up into a situation to where they don't have to option the job they don't have the fear of making the wrong decision they just have to go do what they know and perform the work yeah and that gets them comfortable to the point to where once it becomes time they can they can go out and all they have to do is talk now they've been doing it so they're used to the system and it, it seeming to work out very well for us. Is there a ticket threshold where you will hear like, okay, I can do this versus I want to have the, the team come behind behind me? So there there is specific jobs. We know when there's there's something that needs built. I mean we still are semi dispatching for profit. Yeah. Um to an extent. I mean everyone is, I feel like for the most part. Uh but we go I go out to the jobs, do my normal inspections. Uh, try to get the customer in the best situation I could possibly get them in. Sure. And, but as far as my other service technician, so if my other service technician has a call, yeah. unless it's something he does not know how to do, he's he's taking care of that call fully himself. Um, I have full faith in him that he's going to provide that customer with, you know, the same options I am. Yes. We're on the same page there. Um, and that's, that's important. That's great. So the doing training, that was a new thing for you, right? You're, you're a good communicator, right? But it's yeah. a little different animal. Uh, I know you've been to some cert path training. I'm sure maybe uh, an advanced class or service essentials, right? Yeah, yeah. So I actually went to uh, developing winning trainers okay. uh, with Wesley. So before this, I've been doing training for almost two years now. Okay. And I would go up there and I'd preach to the guys and I'd just be so frustrated. Why are you guys not getting this? <laughs> I'm giving you everything you need to know. Why? Why is this not retained? Why is... It's, it's a you problem, right? It's a you problem. You know, I was getting real easy. as like these guys, them. And after being my head across it for, you know, 18 months of just not getting through to them, I was on the certain path hub and I seen that training come up. Yeah. And I told Mike, I'm like, I need to go to this. I need to go to this. Yeah. Um, so Mike's like done, sent me out there. Wesley changed my whole life when it came to training people. Um, cause the, realizing that it's a you problem is never fun. You know, you want it to be, what are these guys not getting? Sure. To where my content was terrible. It was a lecture. It was this, 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 you're going to do it. Um, to where now I have a lot of different skills that I learned uh, from Wesley. One of the most important ones is answering questions with questions. Very big, helpful tool. You can pry information from anyone with that to where they know the answer you're just pulling it out of them and it helps them retain the information more because they're kind of getting frustrated like why is why is he you know doing this yeah like oh this is the answer and then i'm like see you got it right you got this it builds confidence it builds confidence because they're like you know what i do know this so a lot of the simpler questions aren't being asked anymore because they're starting to question if they actually do know the information and if they don't, I have no problem, you know, answering the question for them. But it's just one of the one of the techniques that I learned that's really changed the way that we go about things. Did he do something like a Jenga? Yeah. So what was that all about? When I was riding, when we came back, my first training I did, um, something I'm very big on is building value. Sure. Um, customers having us out to their house. I love I love our customers. Customers love us, but they don't love having us out there because that means they've got to spend money, right? So let, let's get them taken care of as much as we can in one trip. And, you know, it's building value. We, we got to go in there. We're, you know, sweeping the floor, Swiffer in, putting drop cloths down, you know, building value into the call because in chucking a truck isn't going to be doing that stuff. So why do you cost more? Um, that's, you know, price objections are always there. And building value overcomes that 
ninety percent of the time. Yeah, you're going to have you know customers that just don't see the value in it. Um, and if you ask an employee what's the value in this, they're just going to say, "Well, it's fixed." Right. It's fixed. So what I did was I took a Jenga game and I wrote a single value builder on each Jenga game. And I had my entire team around the table, even our CSR, she was there and we all started pulling blocks out. Yeah. You know, it was great. We'd read them. Why is this a value? Why is, why is, uh, cleaning the countertops a value? Why is sweeping the floor a value? Why is changing the shutoff valves on this kitchen faucet at an add on rate a value? Why are these things, you know, happening? And we had good discussions, great. And the game was kind of getting long winded. So I'm like, all right, time to knock it down. So I yeah. pulled out one and all the guys go, you lost. Yeah. And I said, no, we lost. Right. Because we didn't give the customer this one value that they were looking for. Ooh, good. Um, so it really made the guys like, you know, it was a good laughing, fun time. Everyone was engaged to where it was like, oh, wow. Yeah. I never... I never thought that, I always thought it was a them problem. No, like you didn't deliver them the communication. You didn't write down the estimate properly to where they could follow it. You didn't ask them if they needed anything more. You didn't have another drop cloth on your truck and you got stuff on the carpet. Like, I get you just did a ton of work down there, but that that's what they, you know, that customer cared about that one value that you didn't give them. And that's why the whole thing fell down. That's interesting. Very good. So as your trainees, they've all come involved then since that day. Absolutely. So I'm doing a lot more group activities. Um, we're a lot more engaged. It's not so much specifications on this. Yeah, it's yeah. not. This is how you do this um, because that stuff's still in there, but that kind of goes more to like a procedural lecture to where I'll throw those in, you know, at the end. Yeah. Um, because I've already got their attention. They already know what they need to do. I'm trying to build their confidence with customers first because they have the technical skills 90 percent of you know your service technicians out there they have the technical skills yeah it's the people skills that that need the most work so you you can see now they leave they're they're pumped up versus like oh, i just got my butt cheek for 20 minutes or whatever right you know, absolutely yeah um you know i can walk into the shop and you can you can feel the vibe in the shop it will my yeah and, and my thing if i if i see a guy down yeah. West Wesley's big on the good morning, you know, project your voice. Like, let's hear it. So if I see someone down, I'll, I'll get them engaged before they, they even leave the shop. Cause if they leave in a, in a bad mood, their whole day is going to fall up. Absolutely right. Yeah. That's good stuff. All right. I want to dig into what you're training with what you've done, obviously very, very well. Um, let's talk about going to the job. Okay. You know, you know, I'm sure you get some notes or something from your, your CCR. Um, and what, well, how do you get yourself mentally ready for the job? Whether it's just to pump yourself up, maybe to look at the notes to kind of have an idea of what you're looking at. What, what, what's your process? What do you teach? So my process and what I teach the guys is job history. Um, we do have our app. We have notes in there from what the customer said, what they stated, what they're concerned about. We know what they're concerned about 90, 90% of the time we're going to a call. Um, so we, we have the advantage of knowing Hey, I need to think about this. This is what this customer cares about. Even if this is not the problem, this is what they care about. So I can go in there in the same headspace that they are. Um, I will also be able to see what else we have done there. Like actually, Mrs. Smith, I do see we actually put this water heater in for you a few years ago, and this issue is going to be taken care of under warranty. So you can walk into a situation and complete a diffuse superhero. Yeah, and you can make that connection right off the bat with existing customers. Yeah. Now, newer customers, I just kind of go off of what notes we have. Most of the time, a customer is not going to share too much information. You'll get the long-winded stories every once in a while, but <laughs> you know that that's good. And you know, you're in for a for a you know a, a long period of time of discussing what what options they do have. So, I'll just mindset. How do you get yourself? You know, especially you had those calls where like someone's just a jerk. Yeah, you didn't sell any uh, service feed. You're out in there. So, how do you make sure you have a reset and a good mental mindset? So, my mental mindset, I have a very good ability to turn off anything else mm -hmm. that I've got going on. Don't do so well of it at home. My wife <laughs> always like Let's leave it, leave it at work. Yeah. But for some reason, I can go to work and and turn everything else off to where 
relatively have a clear mind. Even if I'm stressed out about something, just, you know, had a panic attack 10 minutes before. Once I go in front of a customer, I can completely get rid of that. And that's when I kind of take out my disc. Um, mm -hmm. There you go. And I, I use that a lot. Okay. Um, so I can figure out how I need to connect with this person. Uh, right. do, do they just want to be my friend? Do they want, you know, what do they need from me? Right. It's not. When we first started doing the disc and people like to talk about selling, it's more of connecting. Right. Because people want to buy from someone they like, whether it's a high eye who wants to sit here and talk to you for two hours, which is great because me too. Um, or if it's a C, like you have to be aware of that because that C doesn't want to be your friend. He wants to know how, how long is this warranty? How, how much is this going to cost? When can you do it? Um, you need to know all these things and be able to present that particular customer to cater to what they need from you. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the first thing I do is assess, clear my head on the way there, obviously, and then I get there and just kind of start re trying to read the situation. Yeah. So when you when you get okay, you get you get to the house, you get walk, you know, you walk in. There's some certain icebreaker questions to kind of start that conversation, so you can start to read their personality whether there's certain things is it just finding a compliment or what what's your what do you like to do so i i notice a big variety of people and the way someone opens a door tells you a lot about that interesting never heard someone say this so they're opening the door hey so glad you're here yeah right you've got that customer they're already happy you're here yeah you've got the person that opens the door just looks at you for a couple seconds like, and then you have to tell them, oh, hey, I'm here to look at your toilet. You don't know if you're at the right house or not right. because they're they're not acknowledging the fact that you're even there. They're yeah. just opening it up. Um, so if I get into certain situations to where it does get stale, you know, because there's, there's calls that are easy, but the hard ones, right, I will find common ground somewhere. Sure. Um, whether if I'm like, man, I was I was all the way over here and just drove this way, and it was it was it was quite a haul, you know. Yeah. And they'll they'll start talking a little bit, just start opening up, just yeah. piece by piece, just kind of unraveling the puzzle of what what do you need, right? Um, and then at that point, I can open up, start presenting them the options that they need, and get them in the best situation possible. Do you get that early part of the call? Do you kind of talk about, you know, we call it credibility. Yeah, my credibility. Do you say, hey, I've been doing this for X, Y, and Z? Or do you do that right away? So I, I'm i very big and I train my guys on this. Yeah. I am very big on that coming out organically. Okay. Um, because you open the door and maybe a couple of customers are going to really appreciate that. Yeah. But for the most, you kind of go at the door. It's the sound of, hey, my name's Christian. I've been doing this since I was 12. Yeah, like, that's awesome, Christian. Nice to meet you. Um, this is what I've got going on. Right. So typically, when you're reading situations, you kind of know when to put that in. Yeah. And a lot of the times, I find it best to put that in when I'm presenting the option. Sure. I have this experience. This is how long my company's been in business. We have this warranty. Yeah. We're going to take care of you, um, and you can assure of that. That's perfect. How about um question, you know, at some point, there's time to... Even with the eye who wants to chat for two hours, yeah. time to time to actually look at the problem, right? Yeah. You gotta make that that switch. What, what are there any other questions you've asked about the plumbing system or the problem, or is it just getting go into the problem? What's kind of the next step? So the first thing I'll do is I will let the customer take me directly to the issue. Okay. Um, that's that's super important for them, in my opinion, to to keep them safe. I don't go straight down and check your water pressure. I yeah. don't go straight downstairs and check your, you know, expansion tank. Right. So I'll let them show me the problem, and then I'll explain to the customer that I know your fill valve is bad, and it is older, but you could have increased pressure. So why don't we head downstairs, take a look at that, and then we'll go downstairs. Maybe they have a failed PRV. Maybe they have 140 pounds coming into their house, and they didn't know that. Yeah. Um, or there could be a shutoff valve partially closed somewhere, which is making something be loud. It's just getting to that point is getting them into the comfortability that I can take care of this problem, but it might be caused by something. Else. Sure. So, do you always want the do you always want the customer with you throughout this whole process? I I would I, I prefer it. Yeah. Um, it's much easier to show and tell with the customer, explaining to them, hey, this shut up, super corroded. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. No. And then they'll take a peek under there. 
if they're older, I'll take pictures, show. Yeah, if they're older and they can't come everywhere with me, and they they want to, but they just can't do it. I'll, I'll take a bunch of pictures and I'll, I'll show them to them. Like, this is what I found. This is in okay shape, but, you know, the one right next to it's bad. I'm already going to have the water off. We might as well just get them both at the same time. Do you ever call? I mean, this is basically you doing the inspection. Uh, essentially, yeah. Yeah. Do you ever tell them that's what it is? Hey, this is a safety inspection. Uh, we do. We do. We do let the customers know we do give a safety inspection. Okay. Um, it's a five-point safety inspection. Okay. Main valve, PRP, expansion tank gas shut off and all the shutoffs in the room that we're working in because if we do have an emergency situation in that room we want to know where everything's at and then at that point of that safety inspection i will offer a whole home inspection out at no extra cost i'm already out here i um, could avoid you from you know future issues or tell you everything's all good yeah we all hold for for you do you get most side people say yeah go ahead you're already here yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, for the most part, everyone's super receptive of it. Some people tell me no. Yeah. Um, I explain to them, you know, the benefits of it. And a lot of times they'll just come come back to me. Uh, so I've gotten a couple to where... They about it. Yeah, they've thought about it and they're like, you know, I've already got him out here. I, I paid the service fee. He's Yeah, he fixed this one problem, but what if I do have something out and then I have to pay another service fee? Yeah. So you just have to show them, once again, I'll talk about value of an inspection. Yeah. Even if they decline it, that's fine. Um, you know, I gave them all the information I could give them. And not I, pushing. I, I'm not, I'm not going to push any yeah. farther than that. And then I've had a lot of people actually come back and be like, you know what? Do you still have time to do that inspection? Yeah, that's interesting. So you did, a minute ago, you talked, but you, you explained, okay, we're going downstairs for a reason. I'm not just running downstairs to find problems, right? So I want to yeah. dig into how you communicate a little bit about certain things. So... Say, um, you know, you've got a running toilet. Or, you know, a running toilet can, can lead to all sorts of stuff, right? Yeah. It can lead to a toilet rebuild, a new toilet, all that. We water filtration, right? If it, it yeah, aids certain parts of it. So Absolutely. How do, you, how do you talk about what's going on with, a say, a typical running toilet to a homeowner so they see, you know, it's not just a quick fix. There's other things we can do to fix it long term. Absolutely. Like, once again, you know, the customers most of the time with me. That's, that's the ultimate goal is to have them with me. So... I just had a customer last week. She had a toilet tank, running toilet. Um, she was putting the chlorine tablets in it to, to clean the tank. So I brought her in there. I showed her that her tank bolts were rusted. Um, I showed her that the flapper was deteriorated as well as the fill valve looking bad. So now we're, now we're looking at a toilet rebuild to get her back up and going. Yeah. Now, it's the same job as providing in the options. You have to provide the risk. Um, so with that particular toilet tank tune up she had some rusty bolts that might not come off very easily and there's potential of cracking a toilet so that's when she got served her option for a new toilet which she decided wound up working out better for her in the long run because the toilet was 15 years old and she didn't like the style of it anymore and wanted to be a little bit more water efficiency so in that she got much more value out of me just saying okay yeah it's just a flapper yeah. Stop using chlorine tablets to where she wanted more from the situation. You, I just had to ask the information. Yeah. Did you actually give her options right there as you're kind of looking? Yeah, right, right. There wasn't at the end. You didn't no. get a whole big, like, hey, that, not, not, that was, that was just in that, like, like I said, my, my big thing is going to get a resolution for that first issue. Yeah. And then going into more of an inspection. Sure. Okay. And she, and what were the kind of, for that, what kind of three options she gave her to it? Yeah, so she got a basic fill valve and flapper replacement. We do those standard. Um, we don't just change a flapper. Yeah. Um, toilets, in my opinion, in our experience in a company and from kind of what we've talked to with other people, toilets are the toilet repairs are the largest callback for us. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, they changed the fill valve, but now the flapper's running. So we just go ahead and change all the internal parts. Good idea. Um, get it all taken care of, and then we know that they're not going to be calling us back frustrated because they just had us out there to fix this problem. Sure. Um, so she got that option. Then she got a basic toilet. So we offer tiered warranties. Okay. So we have a one-year um, full full replacement warranty on a Mansfield toilet. Okay. And then we have an option that's a little bit better for a Kohler Wellworth toilet um, that comes with a five-year warranty. Very good. And then we have a Kohler Cimarron toilet that has a lifetime warranty. Okay. As long as you're a club member? Uh, yeah, so our club members do get a lot of benefits based off of that. Yeah. Um, but we offer the 
the first two tiered tiered ones are, are for everyone. And we actually just started kicking off our club membership um, too. So, you know, the growth has happened to where now we're finally into our club. Oh, so it's a newer. Yeah, it's a newer thing for oh. for the club. Wow. Now, now, so the lifetime, do they have to have the club membership to have the lifetime? Or is that what you guys stand by at lifetime? So at this point, we're going to, we're going to offer the lifetime to everyone okay. at this point, but the club members are going to get the benefit of on call. So our, oh. our guys, you know, they want to be home with their families. We want them to be home with their families. We want them to have a healthy work, work life balance. Yeah. So one of the benefits our club members are going to get that other customers aren't going to get is emergency service. Interesting. Okay. So our guys have agreed that that's. That's fair if there are customers and, you know, anyone who's a club member's family. Yeah. So we're going to go out there and take care of them. To the um, And everyone's likes that option yeah. as well as, you know, the reduced service fee, the the percentage off of repairs. They're, they're getting all those same benefits. They're just getting them at a, a lower cost. That's interesting. Okay. Very good. Uh, some other, some other fun things. How about when you notice, uh, say some broken fixtures or old fixtures, Hey, does it make sense to look, let's look at all the fixtures, right? Cause they're all. Is old if the house is fifty years old, it's like kind of having the same problem, right? I, any open people's money yeah. is added. So when I see a lot of corroded fixtures, like you're talking, maybe they got a couple lab faucets that are just chewed through. You, yeah, you can see the supply tubes, you know, coming from the yeah. the body. Yeah, and what I like to do at that point is, like you hit on earlier, is that's a that's a water treatment issue. Yeah. Normal good water is not going to deteriorate your faucet unless you're using acid to clean stuff. Uh, so that's when I'll go get my test kit, test okay. get water. I'll see brass. You know, um, pH is a big issue for a lot of brass because it's so soft. So pH is corrosive, whether it's alkaline or it's acidic. Yeah, it's going to do the same same effect on that brass. So that's when I'll go and start looking a little bit deeper into why are why are all these faucets looking like this? Yeah, um, and you don't want to go out. Say, hey, do you ever clean these off? <laughs> you know, that's just disrespect. Sure. We'll roll some stuff out before before we start talking about how to maintain and take care of, of you know, their, their plowing fixtures to keep them for a long longevity. Yeah. So at that point, I mean, will you try to talk options? In that situation, you go, you kind of wait till the sit final sit down to talk. So I'll do my full assessment. And then that's when, when I have multiple fixtures, I've got toilets that are running. That's, that's when I'll, we'll, we'll be sitting down at the table talking about everything. That way I, I know that they know everything that they have going on and why I'm concerned about it. Okay. And that gives me a better gauge of why they're concerned or what they're most interested in. Mm. You know, well, how do you how do you explain like how do you talk about you know I had to cut, come out of a place a a fixture and all of a sudden we're talking about water quality. So how do you kind of speak to the value of getting some filtration and how you know this is the bad stuff that's in your water and so, like what what do, what do you generally how do you approach? That? So the way I approach it is you know that one faucet's hooked to the entire plumbing system. It's not just the one faucet issue or it's not just the one toilet issue. Um, if you see concerns, you know, I always like to bring it up that, Hey, this could be related to another problem, um, in a concerned way. Yeah. So it's, it's out of, they can tell that it's out of a, a place of true concern and not just, Oh, Hey, by the way, let me go, you know, check this out, yeah. um, to be able to connect with them. I've already made that connection with them. So I already have some connection made with that customer to where I have some trust in them already that they, they're like, okay, this guy's here for me. Yeah. Um, and once, once you make that connection and they know you're there for them, it seems like everything else just sort of falls into place. I know it sounds kind of cliche to say, but once that connection is made with that customer, they're more apt to not be objective to what you're, what you're offering them. Right. Um, so if I'm looking at one faucet at a long time customer's house, I'm like, you know what? We should really look at this water quality. They're going to say, absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you think that's a concern, let's, let's take a look at it. Yeah. Or, you know, Hey, this, this is the third time we've changed this, this valve. Are you sure you don't want to put that pressure reducing valve on that? We optioned you a few years ago. We, we have that, that connection and, and trust built, even with the new customers, you know, it just takes a little bit, a little bit longer talking with them and building that connection setting up credibility, letting them see the value on what it's going to be to use our company. Right. 
And once they see all that stuff, they're, they, they seem to be more open-minded on, you know, going with more recommendations yeah. and, you know, letting us look a little bit deeper into you know, what could be causing some. Support for this podcast comes from Bradford White. Bradford White is a full-line manufacturer of residential and commercial water heaters and boilers. While being manufactured and assembled in the USA by American craftspeople, Bradford White's goal is to deliver high-quality, superior products specifically built for the professional contractor. You can always count on the performance and reliability of our built-to-be-the-best products. Visit BradfordWhite.com to learn more. You sell a lot of water heaters, a whole lot of water heaters. Yeah. Tankless, too? Or? Uh, yeah, I am uh, sell a lot of tanklesses. Um, tank water heaters, you know, they're... I'd, I'd say they're probably about 50 50. 50 50? Yeah. So I know you're not getting calls on just, hey, I don't have enough hot water, right? So a lot of times the fixture call leads to a water heater call, especially into new client. How, talk about that tr- transition. I mean, I guess you're doing the, the visual inspection and you come to the water heater with the homeowner. And how do you talk about the, home, the, the water heater for the homeowner to think about, oh, maybe I do need to replace that thing? So in going into a water heater situation, it's presenting the facts. Yeah. Um, so anyone can go on Google, right? And they can look up how long should my water heater last? And they're going to see eight to 10 years, which I strongly believe I used to tell people 10 to 12, but these tanks just are not lasting as long as they used to. Um, and then we'll start talking about the age, maybe some corrosion here. I'll ask how, how do they like their delivery of hot water? Are you getting hot water fast enough? Do you run out of hot water? Um, does it seem hot enough all the time? Is there different things? That's when I kind of go into questioning them. And you'll they're get right at the water. You just walk in the hallway and you start asking yeah. these questions. Yeah. So I'm asking these questions for a reason. Yeah. Because they're telling me what they want. Right. So once I go and give them their option for this tankless water heater, they're going to say, well, this tank's not even leaking. Why do I have this tankless quote? Yeah. Because that's what, from everything I asked you, that's what you said you wanted. Yeah. And I'm just, you know, giving you the options based off of what you want. You want a water heater that's going to last you, you know, the rest of the time you're here. The life expectancy of a tankless water heater is 25 plus years because you can replace every part on it. Once it leaks, it doesn't mean it's done. Yeah. It just means it needs to be repaired. Like you said, you wanted hot water faster so we can run a dedicated recirculation line directly off this tankless water heater to deliver that to you. Um, You said you run out of hot water or you want to fill your hot tub up with 120 degree water, but you can't do that with your 40 gallon tank. Yeah. Like this is going to deliver you all that stuff and it makes their decision relatively easy because it was their decision. It was their idea. I just presented them with the option that they told me they wanted. Is it, do you ask for permission to give them options? So when you get that water heater and you're like, do you say, is, can I give you some options for this later on or something like that? So, or you just assume you're, I, I would I would I would just assume they have me at the house, especially if it's a direct water heater. If it's a direct, yeah. yeah. But if right. I say if it's a, yeah, I'll call it. So to that, it's actually funny. So I uh, about two years ago, I was at a person's house. They wanted their basket trainers put on. Just got a new sink. They had all the material. The guy knew what needed to be done. Called us over there. You know, had a specific price he wanted to pay. <laughs> I think we had a time slot open, so we went over there and did it. And I'm laying under the sink. I'm conversating with this guy yeah. and we're on a slab a lot of basements out in ohio yeah. but this particular house was a slab and i was looking over and i seen his water heater was older and it didn't even have a pan underneath of it oh boy. and i was like yeah well, how long have you guys lived here for the first question i asked he's like oh we lived here for eight years i'm like you ever had that water heater changed and he said no we haven't I'm like, so it's it's got to be at least, what do you say, like 10, 11 years old? He's like, yeah, it, it's got to at least be that. He's like, the only thing that concerns me about that is you don't have a pain underneath of there. Yeah. So that basket trainer call parlayed into a conversation, just a passing of me seeing it, to he just got an option to put a pan under there, which is basically a water heater installation. We pull it, put the pan underneath of it, and reinstall the water heater. Um, to he ended up saying, you know what? I'm just going to replace this and get a paint under it, and I don't have to worry about it anymore. Right. So that call went from not a great opportunity to a relatively good ticket. Yeah. And uh, it was it was pretty pretty impressive uh, that the customer responded and took 
my recommendations and, and just went with it. Just it came from the casual yeah. conversation and observation. Even even when I go to a warranty water heater, someone wants us to pick up a water heater from Lowe's, I'll still go there and I'll still give them options for, for our heaters. Really? Yeah. So a lot of people think a water heater is a water heater, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, something I'm not first on, I'd be like, well, that, that you know, pen's the same one I've seen at Walmart. Why is this one $12? Yeah. It's just an observation. That's what a lot of people make. They're not objecting that that pen called. They just don't know why it goes a water heater. Yeah. Right? So the big thing in that is explaining a professional water heater, tanked water heater, opposed to a Home Depot water heater. You've got cheaper drain valves. You have cheaper temperature pressure relief valves. You have cheaper gas valves. Um, you have to deal with Home Depot directly to get warranty. If this gas valve goes bad on here, you have to call Bream or A.O. Smith or whoever it is and say, hey, this gas valve's bad. They'll say, we'll send you one out in a day or two. Yeah. So you're waiting. And then you're paying more for warranty stuff. Yeah. To where if you go with our water heater, if this thing stops tomorrow, we're going to be back here with the parts to fix it. Yeah. And you're not going to have to pay anything. So they see the value. They see the value. It's just, yeah. it's just built, just built into explanations. Yeah. So you can over explain things to where you, you know, overwhelm a customer. But yeah. And I've done that my fair share until um, I realized, like, hey, some people don't want all the information that you're giving. It, 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 I mean, it sounds like you don't. Over, you know, you don't do a bunch of tech talk either. You kind of make it so they understand, right? It's, it's, it, so they can get it. You have that one, one out of 10 customer who's a researcher. The C. Yep. You got your C. Yeah. And, uh, my C's are always my fun ones because <laughs> that, that's when I get to go in and nerd out. Uh, <laughs> we, we get to talk about everything, um, under the sun, you know, gallons, how much, how many gallons does this thing produce? Cause my old one did this. So, yeah. You know, we, we, we get to go have those conversations. It's fun for me. It, it keeps me sharp. Sure. Because they'll bring up some good points that I'm questioning myself every once in a while. Right. Ended up, you know, getting everything turned back around. But th those are always my fun ones is, is going with those C's and, right. and and trying to, you know, win them over with the technical. How do you handle it? The D? I always hear D person. Oh, that's a tough one. D. Like, you, you know, they may not even want to go with you on the walk through. I'm like, I got to call to make, uh, you just go fix it and now come talk to me. So. Most D's that I come across are the busy customers. Yeah. Right? They're busy. They let you in the house. All right, I got a meeting. So they, they go into their office. They're in there talking. Just go look at the problem. Yeah. So I go downstairs, you know, most of the time upstairs, wherever it's at. I'll go to the area. I'll find the option. I'll just be standing there. This is me for two years. I just stand there. Yeah. For my little little option for you. I can do this. <laughs> they're like, yeah, whatever, just do it. That's fine. There, there's no conversation, you right. know? So they're dominating that conversation Yeah. to the point to where the D's want to be in control. Right. Um, but you, I, I feel like you have to, even if you're not a D, I'm, you know, super high eye, um, but you have to become a, somewhere in between a D and an I to be able to get through to them. You have to stand your ground as well to let them know, hey, I found something that concerns me. You really need to hear this. Yeah. This is what I need to talk to you about yeah. to where you've earned their attention. Yeah. It's earning their attention. They're no longer dominating the situation. And it took me a long time to realize that because I was like, well, I just don't do very well with people like this. You know, I just chalked it up yeah. in my head like, oh, man, it's another one of these. <laughs> this isn't going to be good. You right. Know, to where... I was at a house one time. The guy got multiple options. He's in his office. Yeah. And he's having me talk to his wife. But his wife's not the one making the decisions. He is. But he's too busy to talk to me. So he was sitting in his office. He yells out to me. Too too busy to even get up, you know. <laughs> Super down. It yells at me from his chair, says something. Why are you guys $200 more expensive? Yeah. You know, just immediately coming at me with objections. Yeah. So... I was kind of frustrated. Cute. I stayed professional, you know, because I'm like, man, you can't even get up to come talk to me. Like, I, I didn't earn that respect from you, right? Right. To where I directly told him, they are not giving you this, and we are giving you this. Yeah. This is going to cost you extra. And you also asked me about this, 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 and this. Yeah. Which was a premium battery backup sump pump with, you know, Wi-Fi because they travel a lot because I ask these questions. Yeah. I'm like, so I gave you these options based off of what your wife told me. And from what you guys said, this top option is your guys' best. Yeah. And he goes, honey, this is our guy. 
whoa, <laughs> because he was just used to everyone saying, okay, well, I'm sorry, have a nice day, because he dominated the situation. Right. To where I'm like, you know what? He was looking this, for it. Yeah. I was like, this is why I did this. Yeah. He wanted a direct response, not an angry response, not me overreacting, but he wanted his dominance to be directly responded to. Yeah. Instead of a big runaround of, you know, this tankless water heater does this, opposed to what your tank water heater did, and this battery backup sump pump would be really, he didn't want the flux. Right. He wanted, I'm busy, tell me why I need it, how much it's going to cost, and when can you put it in. Sure. And once he had that information, it was great. That's you know, cool. Now they're, they're longtime customers. Was that a uh, was that the moment? That, you really that was the moment. We direct with the Ds? Yeah, that was the moment when I, you know, because I, I took the disc assessment, I really pushed for it. That was actually the first training thing I did when we were, when we were here is when yeah. we all took the disc assessment, everyone in the company. It was it, really, it, it, it was a fun time. Interested. And when I took that, I would, you know, read about everything, watch videos, you know, I'm a big researcher. I'll go home and watch a video on a water heater that I haven't seen before. Yeah. Just start going into a deep dive. Yeah. And, you know, I did that with the disc and I was like, I cannot, I cannot get past these Ds. Everyone else is easy. An I is easy. I'm going to, that's easy. We just got to talk. You know, C's easy because I I know a lot of the specifications. That's what they want to know. I got the details. Yeah, good. Um, but the D was just it took a bit. Yeah, and I mean we don't hit on the S very often because I mean that one's in my opinion an I and an S are very complimentary. So that's kind of an easy one for They're people pleasers. Yeah, yeah. I'm you know I'm a people pleaser as well as you know high I, but. It's just it's just easy to sympathize with them and sure and get them into a situation that they're in. But the uh, that that moment when I was standing there and all the time I spent into trying to figure out these D's, I'm like, this is it. It just clicked. It's like a lot of things. You know, you try to do something, you try to do something. It's taken forever. It's taken forever, and then just clicks, and then it's easy. Yeah. Um. And you know, reading those D's wound up being you know relatively easy for me at that. I bet we had uh, training conversations about that story. With your team, yeah, we 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 do a lot of role play on calls. So the, there there could be something that goes wrong. You know, no one's perfect. We all make mistakes. You know, I make mistakes to where we'll we'll pull up a ticket. You know, no shame in it. There's no no one's in trouble. A lot of times we won't even put the name of the job on there. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. Like, what could we have done differently? Right. You know, to to build the person up who knows. Hey, this is my job. This right. Is about me. To it's just a group conversation at that point on how to get each other up to that next level. Yeah. Wanted to hit a couple more things. Uh, slow drains. So you get a call for the slow drain. So how does that, how does that go about? What do you, what do you do in those situations? So slow drains, drains in general need a lot more looking into. Yeah. Is it vented? Is it ran properly? Do you have a drum trap? Is your sewer clay? Do you, who redid your plumbing? Yeah. I re- my, my remodeler did my plumbing. Did he have a plumber do it? No. Okay, so now you've got a lot more things to look at. Oh, if a slow drain, you're going to get a bathtub. You're going to get a floor drain for a laundry tub. You're going to get a kitchen sink. You are slow. So you have looking into, before you even send that snake down the drain, there is a lot more to it. Because if I say, Miss Smith, I'll snake your drain. It's going to cost you X amount of dollars. Then I put that snake through and winds up. She doesn't have a vent. That's why her sink's not draining. So now I got to say, oh, well, actually you don't have a vent on there now. Yeah. So knowing all the information up front, inspecting the situation, figuring it out, providing multiple options um, for slow drains, I always like to send the snake down, get it open. Yeah. And then Rigid came out with a really cool tool. It's called the Rigid Flex Shaft. Um, it goes into inch and a half and two inch drains. Um, you can actually hook it up to your P-trap that's underneath the sink and it's got a little slot on the top of the weir to where you can send this flex shaft down as you're running water in this open drain Mm. and it's a chain knocker and it just cleans cleans the pipe hot so it's a really good value for the customer to throw that in after we're done snaking a drain so we can we can make more off of that call and they they get a much cleaner drain that's going to last them a lot longer than yeah. just sending the cable down there and pulling it out and be like well you're opened up right to where we can actually do a cleaning on on most of these smaller drains with with that small investment of that rigid flex shaft talk about the transition from okay it's a slow drain to we have a sewer issue like it's not draining for a real big issue so how do you how do you make that how do you have that conversation with some so anytime 
for sending a, a snake down. Anytime anyone's cabling a drain, um, most people are going to start off with their C cutter on, 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 oh, there's a big tree in the yard, guarantee it's roads, this is a clay main, cast, whatever it is, uh, definitely tree roads. And mm -hmm. so you have people send that cutter down there, boom, can't get it to go. It's not, it's not moving. So then that's when I'll talk to the customer. I'm like, hey, I have this three inch head inside of your four inch pipe and it's not making it through it. It should do that with ease because it's a straight run. There's nothing else going on. We should definitely get, you know, a camera in here and take a look and see what's going on. Yeah. Um, so once the drain's open, we'll send the camera down. And at that point I can show video of where the issue is, whether it's, you know, reverse fall on the pipe, whether it's a belly, whether it's a collapsed hub, um, then we can address that, give them our best recommendation on what we need to do to fix it. People don't want to keep having stuff backed up in their no. house, but they also want to see the effort and the, the honesty behind it. That's a good, yeah, that's a good note. Because I've, I've gone to a bunch of calls to where, hey, these people came out and told me I need to replace my sewer. They're looking for a second recommendation because they didn't give them enough information. They didn't care to connect or sympathize with, hey, your sewer's bad, don't have good news to where they're just like, yeah, your sewer needs replaced. It's going to be ten thousand dollars. It's going to be twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, and they're like, what? I, yeah, I, I've never had a problem until today. How is it just bad? Yeah, just for some hair. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, how did they get to this point right. with the lack of information? So when you do run across that situation, obviously it's good for the contractor, right? We're we're, we're getting ready to do a sewer. It's a high profit job. This yeah. is great. Everyone's excited. That customer's not not excited. No, sure. You know, we have in in the traits, we have one of like the least least uh, glorified sales job. I mean, we're selling stuff to people that they they don't think about until it doesn't work. You know, like a hot water heater. They're like, yeah, I've had hot water, now I don't. And then you you go and give them these options on the heaters, and they're they're yeah, they're gonna go with them, and it's our job to steer them in the direction that's gonna be best for them. Right. But they're not excited. They're not gonna go be like, hey. In the car. Some people with tanklesses do, but yeah, they're not going to call their buddy over like, hey, you got to come see this new flat screen TV. You know, <laughs> you know they go stand down, drink a couple beers in front of the water here. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so it's it's always it's always a touchy situation. So yeah. Sympathizing with every customer is, is huge. And I think that that's where a lot of these sewers that get questioned comes from. Yeah. There was an explanation. There wasn't concern. There wasn't hey, I'm really sorry to tell you this, but I think something, you know, is seriously majorly wrong with your drain. Let me, you know, put this camera down here, take a look at it, see what's going on. Maybe we can do a spot repair. I can give you a few different options um, because most of the time there are options. Yeah. Um, you know, lining's really big nowadays. Um, that's, that's something that I'd you know, look to get into in the future um, to, to give to an option as the customer because... You know, even though it's not that big of a cost difference for the customer, I mean, they might really love their yard. Yeah. And if they really love their yard, then they're not going to want us digging up and replacing their whole suit. True. Yep. So having that option to be able to give to customers is massive because you're, you're, you're providing them so much value and choice that they, they get to make the best decision for them. I want to dig in. Uh, we, we went through a whole lot of, uh, of just different situations, but let's talk about options. So. You've done your visual inspection. You know, there's a bunch of things that could be done to this home. Do you typically write out, well, first of all, where do you write your options? Are you a guy that goes to the van or do you like to do the table? Yeah, so I, I, I'm i with the customer as much as I can be. Yeah. So I will be in the bathroom doing my inspection with the customer. As I'm telling them what's happening, I'm also writing it down as well as, you know, sometimes putting in the app. Now, that's kind of a... I was going to ask, do you use the iPad or... Yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. so I'll, I'll be doing both. That way it's in the estimate form as well as on the option sheet because it's going to confer to to somewhere to where it just gets redundant for the customer to sit through and, you know, wait for things. Sure. The customer wants to feel like the process is smooth. Sure. Um. So I never like to go out to the truck. Yeah. It just leaves them down. Like, why is he out there? Why has he been out there for two hours? What is he doing? You know, obviously they're not out there for two hours, but what's taking him so long? I got an appointment yeah. to where when they're with you, as you're writing these options, hopefully you're showing them. And if not, you're, you're, you're taking pictures of what you find. Yeah. Um, then most of the time I'm, I, I love to sit down, you know, the first time I ever watched the crown champion panel. Yeah. Um, there was a, 
I think his name's John Schulman. He was on the panel that year. I don't think. Yeah, he's a member. Yeah. Um, and pretty sure he was the one who said he likes to sit down at the kitchen table on the panel. And ever since I heard that, I'm like, you know, that's a really good idea because there's connection there. Yeah. I've actually heard a lot of people say it, but I think he was the first one I ever heard say that um, in the group. But I started taking that into consideration to where like, oh, yeah, you want to sit down? I can go over all this stuff with you. So, you know, mostly I'll have them sitting next to me. Yeah. I don't want them across the table. I want them right next to me to where I'm showing them. They're looking at the same things I'm looking at. They know everything straightforward. You know, because once we get into some of these bigger options, our straightforward price guide's out the window, you know. I mean, it's great for that quick service. You know, they're seeing things. They're looking at the book. Yeah. You know, I'll have the book on the table sometimes. I'll be skimming through there. I've actually gotten a customer one time, replaced all of her faucets in the house because she was flipping through the straightforward price guide and seeing a picture of a faucet. She's like, I love that. Can we get those in all of my bathrooms? Oh. Oh, really? Yeah, so... Hey, here you go, guys. Have the book out. No, even if they're not as interested in going through the fine details with you, yeah. I mean, they're still engaged because they're still with you. They're still looking. They're they're here, and then you're giving them the options. And then, I'm, you know, I had a really hard time because when I came to Expo last year in Orlando, I was really new. I needed to get these inspection forms. I needed to figure this out, so... Aaron, Aaron actually gave a, a really good presentation on that last year, and I was super, like, just didn't understand. Yeah. You know, he was saying this, but, like, in my head, it didn't make sense. So I was super confused. So I ended up actually scheduling an interview. It was me, a, a little meeting with me, Missy, and Aaron. Okay. And we sat down, and I'm just asking question after question after question after question. And I could just see, like, there was a big disconnect from everyone. Yeah, and Missy's like, "What are you trying to ask?" <laughs> and I'm like, "I don't know. I actually, you know what? That's that's great because this is a bad thing I have in life. I'll just start throwing questions out, long-winded questions that lose people." Yeah. So, Aaron always wanted me to start at the top. You know, everything everything you found needs to be the first thing. I was always like, "No, I'm going to go from the bottom." Oh. So okay. I went from the bottom until I realized that the top was the right. So, sorry. <laughs> but you're right, because you're taking things away. You are, and and it makes so much more sense, because, like, in a perfect world, you have, you know, 20 different things wrong in your house, and it would it would be great to get all of them taken care of. Yeah. It would be amazing. Well, you know, if it, if it becomes a, a, a price issue, then, you know, hey, we, we can finance it. We can, we have different options. Yeah. Um, or, you know, they don't want to finance. They don't have that amount of cash, or they don't want to give you know, that much money away for what they need done. So then that's when we start pulling some stuff off. Well, you know, this to me isn't as important as X, Y, and Z. I was going to say, how do you decide what to put in each of your, I have what, three options? To yeah, we, we give three options. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll give four, but I really hate giving more than, than three options. Me and one of my guys just talked about that the other, the other week. He gave someone like seven different options. Oh, I understand. And I mean, it was, it was a guarantee. The guy already had a price over the phone, knew what he wanted. Guy went there, did a great job. He optioned, you know, I'm super happy that he did that, but it ended up overwhelming the customer to where that so, scheduled scheduled job wound up turning into nothing because he got overwhelmed. So I really try to stick with those three options. Yeah. Um, and going from those, take taking, as you, we have an inspection form, then we have our option sheet. Yeah. So our, our inspection form has critical, it has okay yeah. and it has good so we can start taking off of what's marked on that option sheet okay maybe maybe there's a corroded faucet on there it's not leaking just looks ugly we can we could probably pull that off you know look at that in a later date there's obviously if you have shut off valves in your house that aren't working we're definitely gonna want to get that taken care of yeah. and so it's the major stuff we absolutely put that yes yeah, so, you don't take that away yeah my my last option is like hey this is what you absolutely have to do it, now well that step will include more than just the reason for the call so you'll both hey you really should yeah you can, uh, yeah so if i go in somewhere and say they're the, they called me there because they had a tmp leak but they say they're i know these are related but they're they're not essentially and their expansion tanks waterlogged you know some people just change that tmp and then go out the door yeah. You know, quick, easy, and out to where, you know, but why did that expansion tank go bad? And then you're checking the pressure. Well, all three things at this point now are related to where PRV was necessary. 
expansion tank was necessary as well as a TMP. So, you know, if we can keep the things related to each other or say I went for a kitchen faucet, went off to shut a valve off and I seen one dripping from the ceiling, that, that turns critical right. at that point. So a critical thing is something that anyone with eyes can see and they, they know like, hey, that's definitely not right. Yeah, that's good. All right, so you, you show the three options. Do you show them all with the, with a finance price or in a club price too? So, like I said, we're relatively new to club well, price. Well, uh, financing. But on the financing, yes, I will have like a monthly okay. on there. Yeah. So there'll, there'll be a monthly. Um, it kind of changes. And it's a, struggled a little bit keeping up with the terms. So yeah. When we first signed up, we had 18 months, and it went down to 10 and 6, and um, – we don't get a lot of people financing it. Okay, you should. Um, we probably have two people a month finding it. Ah, okay. Um, we have we have really great customers that are, you know, our target target customers, kind of who we're, who we're working with most of the time, which is mm-hmm. nice. Um, but there are customers every once in a while that want to finance, and I'm glad we had that option for them. But I will give everyone a, a, a monthly price. Yeah. You, we we talked about a credibility statement earlier, and you said you prefer to do more at the sit down. So at this juncture, so what? What do you ultimately say to differentiate yourself and the business and why you're the company for them to do this? And at the same time, you know, so you don't get another bit. I mean, you're selling yourself. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, that's what you're doing. You're, you're selling yourself to the customer. You're not even selling the product anymore. Right. They, they want to feel comfortable with who they're going with. So when there's multiple options from different companies in here, you know, they're like, well, this guy said this, this guy said this. So, you know, your credibility statement is, is very important. It needs to be impactful at this point. So in my credibility statement, I will give company background. I'll give our warranty. I'll give, you know, our hundred percent satisfaction guaranteed. But I like to, after saying all that, but I can tell you this much right now, there's not going to be another company that's going to give you the customer service that we're about to give you. So if you call us, you know, tomorrow, we're going to be there right then and there to fix the issue. We're going to clean the floors. We're going to respect all of your property. You know, I kind of go a little bit deeper into credibility followed with value. Yeah. That's good. Like, because the value that we want to provide to the customer is credibility. Yeah. As long as we're, you know, I'm, nowadays setting expectations for the customers i'm i'm trusting other guys to go out and fulfill those sure. um so everyone needs to be on the same page everything needs to be the the same experience for every yeah. customer whether we go into a hundred and twenty thousand dollar house or a two million dollar house they need to be treated the same yep yeah. and that's something that is makes a company credible like hey these guys swiffered my floor after they were done working on the sink you know, we do that and customers love it. They think it's amazing. You know, I'll, we'll always get the joke, oh, hey, you want to do the rest of the floor? <laughs> yeah. So, but with telling them those intangible values that we give that a lot of other people don't give, yeah, it seems to bring them what, doing what the credibility statement does, right? It's like earn, earn, your, earn, their, earn your trust in them and that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. Yeah. But that extra little bit at the end with, hey, this is the value we're going to provide to you, it kind of goes away from credibility to a connection. Like, hey, these people really care about my experience. Yeah. And these other guys didn't even tell me they're going to put a drop cloth down. Are they going to? Right. No one's writing that on an estimate. Right. But laying that out, setting that expectation with that credibility statement really seems to you know be impactful. That's great. How, I mean, uh, are there any times where... You know, what, what do you say to people? Like, Boy, that's still a lot of money. We give them the time to maybe, or they want to think about. We just kind of step away and go, hey, I'm going to check on something and let them process. Because sometimes they may not have expected thousands of dollars. So situationally, um, we'll talk in a hypothetical where we kind of talked about this earlier about the pens, right? Yeah. And it, it is a lot of money. Yeah. You know, you just go in and tell someone, hey, we're going to have to replace your sewer. It's going to be $10,000. Like, wow, $10,000. And that initial shock, you know, because they don't know what it's going to cost. Right. It's not necessarily people like to immediately shut down and start defending. It's not so much as an objection as much as an observation. Yeah. They're not always saying 
ten thousand dollars, you're you're out of your mind. Right. It's just the processing. Yeah, they're like, wow, ten thousand dollars to where a lot of people like to jump right into boom, 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 boom. We we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, but don't you you know yeah. where I let them process it for a second. Say, now what what are your concerns with this? So I go back into questioning. Yeah. So to where, you know, like they questioned me to where I kind of settle back down, sort of like I do with my training. Like I told you, that was like my biggest takeaway with Wesley. And it was a skill that ended up transferring over from that to where I can use it everywhere to where I can ask them now, now what, what are, what are your concerns? What are you thinking to where they're going to start opening up? They're going to tell you all of their reservations. They're going to tell you where they're held up at, whether it is cash, could be cash. Yeah. I mean, $10,000 is a lot of money, you know? A lot of people don't just have that sitting around to give someone for their sewer that just, you know, quit working unexpectedly. Sure. Um, so once you can identify the issues with what their their reservations are, then you can come back and connect with that person. And you can normally, you know, close that job, get them taken care of, and everyone's on the same page and happy because the expectation was met because we knew exactly what they were feeling. So, you know... You're going to have people out there. I mean, everyone does. You know, I could go out tomorrow and go to a call and someone's like, yeah, it's way too much money. You need to get out of here. Right. It's just not everyone's going to be everyone's cut. Yeah. Yeah. And and that that's something that you have to get good at realizing. But you also have to be very aware that, you know, a lot of the price objections that I've seen and that I've seen go south are putting extra pressure on top of it. You know, even if it comes from a place of sincerity, yeah. Um, sometimes saying the most is saying nothing. Mm-hmm. And just kind of, you've got to read that situation because yeah. no one wants to go tell someone they're about to spend $10,000 and they don't want to hear it. Sure. So it's, it's, a, it's an awkward situation for everyone. And the best way is to present it, give the facts, let them, you know, process this big expense. Yeah. Or even a small expense. You know, a garbage disposal. Let's say, you know, hey, it's going to be five hundred dollars to change your garbage disposal out with our new ones, but it's going to be, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, and they they thought they you might have been putting in for two hundred and fifty dollars because they got one eight years ago that cost that much. Yeah, yeah. So you got to let them process it. And a lot of people, when they're processing that, they're going to start just talking, talking, talking because they're they're processing it. But a lot of people verbally process where what they're thinking. So if you just sit there and listen to it and actually listen, be an active listener in the situation, then you can, you you heard what their issue is. So you just have to fix, fix that one issue that they're having. Right. It's just, you know, I guess it's a circling back to financing or circling back to the value you provide. Exactly. Just staying calm. It sounds like a lot. It's demeanor of being positive about yeah. what you're priced. Don't be afraid of. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of service technicians out there, you know, like they, they have, you know, great technical skills. Like we talked about the sure. getting here and the people skills is just the one thing that everyone can work on. Everyone can get better at their people skills. Uh, and reading that situation is the most crucial part to any price objection. Sure. It, it can be, you know, oh, you're going to charge me a service fee. I mean, we, you know, even, even $79, $110, whatever, whatever the service fee is, it's all comes down to patience and reading the situation because we could say two things in two different tones and they're going to be received completely different. Right. Yeah. So if you take that second to figure out what, what that person's needing, because they're needing something more. If yeah. there's any reservation, they need something more, whether it's more information, whether it's more money, whether it's financing option, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, they're going to end up telling you it, but you have to stay calm in this situation to, to, to even be able to get to that. Point. Yep. That's good. Very good stuff. All right. Uh, you split, you sell the job. Some of these jobs are big jobs, right? And they can't happen yeah. right now. They can't be completed right now, so you're coming back. Is there anything you do to try to avoid cancellations? I mean, is it trying to do a little job of is it, if it's a laundry list of things that needs to be done, or is it just, you know, making sure you know, you leave, you don't leave, here's the cost, they go, oh, okay, and then run out, you know, you kind of still warm them up a little bit, or what? what what's your process to avoid cancellation? So... When I was a technician, like fully in a truck, I mean, I was fully invested. Um, so I would go out to a call on Friday, give someone an option. And they're like, oh, I want to put a tankless in. When do you want to do it? I said, you want to do it now? Yeah. 
Um, so I, I, I like to do most things right then and there. Now you got special order stuff. You've got something out of the ordinary, or you have, you know, a whole house of shutoff valves plus three faucets, plus the water heater. Plus they're going to, you know, put a smart home valve in whatever they're going to do. Um, typically I would try to collect a deposit on, on, on that job. Okay. Um, because it shows their commitment. We're going to order the stuff. So it shows our commitment that, Hey, we're going to do this on this day. This is how long the parts are going to take to get in. And then they, they get to make, make their determination there. So if they're not going to give a deposit, I don't think you're going to get the job anyways, but most people are willing to give that deposit because they have some skin in the game. It's sure, you know, it's not. And if they have questions, they can call back in that there's more flexibility there. Cause everyone's went and like, Oh, I'm going to do this. And then they're going to go home. Like, do we really need it? Yeah. I know. Right. To where if the, the deposit's there and say they really don't want to go with the job, then no problem. We'll refund it. No big deal. Um, but it keeps them there with you. Yeah. You know, you're together. Sure. Absolutely. Just a couple more wrapping up. Um, what motivates you to have such a, like last year, phenomenal year in Ohio, especially is that on a coast, do million dollars, so, sold and installed. That's a lot of, uh, I'm sure, long days, yeah. some weekends. So what, what motivates you to, to, to put in that kind of effort day in and day out? So my, my family motivates me largely. Um, and like, it was, it's funny, we were just down there, um, in the, the kickoff. Yeah. And that's, that was one of the questions. What, what name one word that motivates you? You know, so family, I always want to be, you know, the best I can be for my, my sons. Never want to stop getting better for, you know, my guys, my company, everything there. But the thing that like drives me the most is like a fear of failing. Um, I don't know why, but it's like, I always question myself. I'm always like on edge that everything could fall apart for some reason. Mm. Um, so that drives me like a lot of people are like, Hey, you probably shouldn't do that. But <laughs> it's a very good driving factor. It gives me my drive. It keeps me going. It, yeah. you know, there's always room for improvement. Sure. So being afraid of failure, I guess, keeps me just improving because it just seems like you jump here and it just follows you jump here and then it just follows. Yeah. Um, which, which that helps me Yeah. Um, just continue to, to push through and continue to do what I need to do to try to, you know, make everything work. Sure. Last question. Uh, what do you tell your new techs or what would you tell someone out here today that's, that's trying to get to your level? What, what piece of advice might you have to really go from a good tech to a guy doing a million dollars on a, a yeah. one truck? I mean, you gotta have drive, um, especially, you know, in, in different areas of the country, like, like where we're at, you know, my average tickets aren't even close to some of these guys. Yeah. And that's, that's awesome that they're building those good tickets, but you know, I just, I can't necessarily do that. In my mind. No, well, your hourly rates a lot different. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot. It was a, yeah. It's a, it's a lot different. Yeah. And, and you know, that that's fine, but you gotta have drive. You've got to want it. You have to have the knowledge, you know, so to confidently go there in there and option out a customer, you need to take that extra time. It's not going to, you're not going to learn it all at work. You know, take in that extra time, go home, read information that that interests you yeah. you know obviously this is your job and yeah, it's no fun thing about work when you go home but it kind of pushes you up to that next level of like i know i know how to size every gas line in this house i know the btus that this takes i know what the drawdown is you know this little stuff that a lot of plumbers don't think about they're like oh yeah that takes half inch i'll just go run 200 foot a half inch to it when it's not going to carry that and then the third thing you know is going to be actually caring you have to care about that customer. Um, you got to go into every house like it's your grandma. And if you go in there and you know you're trying to do the best you can for them, avoid them the most headache that you can, then you're going to be able to sleep at night. They're going to be able to sleep at night, and it just creates a nice success little, you know, trio right there. Awesome. So. Well, very good. Well, Christian, congratulations on it. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for spending so much time with us. I think yeah. people are going to really benefit from this. So thanks, yeah. sir. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. That's Christian Youngblood of Mackinac Sons in Wadsworth, Ohio, who sold and installed $1.48 million in residential plumbing work. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If so, please like and subscribe on YouTube. If you're on your favorite podcast player, please leave us a five-star review. The two seconds you take to leave a review will help other success-minded contractors like you find us, and hopefully get a little bit better, which elevates our entire industry. And please join me for future episodes. 
This has been The Successful Contract, powered by CertainPath. Support for this podcast comes from Professional Plumbing Group. How many hours in a day do your plumbers waste because you don't have the right part for the job? This problem leads to additional issues and reduced productivity, poor customer satisfaction, and increases your cost per job. Professional Plumbing Group can help you solve all those issues and more. We have everything you need to help your business grow and become more profitable by allowing you to focus on plumbing, not inventory management. Go to AuthorizedPlumberProgram.com for more information. The Successful Contractor Podcast is part of the Certain Path family. Certain Path builds successful home service businesses and has for 23 years. We do it by providing contractors with a proven path to success, professional coaching, software solutions, and a member community of over 1,000 contractors just like you. Doubling your sales with a 20% net profit and an inspiring company culture is all possible. Let us show you the way. With Certain Path, success is made certain. Visit www.mycertainpath.com for more information.